Um, wonderful to actually hear. Dr. Yasmin Ali Haq, country representative of UNICEF India, joins us. Ma'am, there are so many obvious and also hidden ways in which children have been affected by the pandemic. Tell us just how badly they have been hit. Why we need this campaign to reimagine a different tomorrow for them? So thank you so much. Let me start by thanking you for joining us in this campaign. Uh, as we celebrated World Children's Day, it was a stark reminder for us that we have to address the crisis as a child rights crisis. We know that uh, around 11% uh, of the cases are of people under the age of 20. Um, and children are directly affected, but the face is really one of an adult one. However, for us, it's really important that we see this, how child rights have been affected. Consider children whose uh, parents have lost their livelihood, who have had to move from where they live to another place of shelter. Uh, consider the 300 million odd children who are not in school at the moment, and not all of them. In fact, a very small minority of them are able to access online learning. Plus, as you were saying, the basic services that uh, they did not have access to, the fear and stigma that is affecting them and their families. So for all these reasons, it's so important for us to bring the attention to children because what affects them today can have a ripple effect for much longer. The type of psychological harm that children are facing, we, as you said, Childline has had more calls. So children are really being impacted by it. And it is, in a way, silent. And thank you for joining us and making this apparent. We have been working well, with, you, with the government, with civil society organizations to bring focus on the right. services that are needed. And we really look Just to so. uh, other stakeholders to join us because uh, agencies like UNICEF, we rely on voluntary contributions. And every contribution you right, make right. really affects the lives of children. Yeah, Dr. Yasmin, thank you. In fact, thank you for doing so much uh, that you've been doing and with UNICEF all these years. Uh, just can you tell us to, uh, a little bit specific about what you're doing right now for children in this pandemic? And uh, for example, when people donate, what will it be spent on? So uh, a big part of our work is really uh, supporting the frontline warriors, whether they're ASHA workers, Anganwadi workers, or uh, school teachers or sanitation workers who are spreading the message, who are communicating with all the communities to remind them of the very simple measures to prevent COVID, which means wearing your mask, maintaining your hand and your respiratory hygiene, and not going into crowded places. So we have reached over 650 million people with these messages. We've also worked very closely with, uh, of course, the Ministry of Education at the national level and in the states to see children get access to remote learning. And we estimate that we've reached about 41 million children in this effort. Uh, we also know that as the services have reopened and the way we have worked with our counterparts and partners, around 20 million children have had access to some essential services that are needed to keep them healthy and to prevent malnutrition. And of course, malnutrition is an existing problem. So a lot of our effort is going into supporting children with malnutrition to be identified and that they read uh, they receive the type of uh, services that are needed. Mm -hmm. So those yeah. are some of the ways, uh, including uh, getting equipment for uh, lab testing, for oxygen concentrators, for hospitals, um, by getting uh, reagents that were needed in the early days to do the, the testing, uh, and importantly, focusing on the psychosocial support care for children right. themselves, for their families, and for our frontline warriors. Yes, absolutely much needed. Ma'am, please stay with us, Yasmin Ji. We are just coming back to you.
But in the meantime, let us hear now from one of the legends of Indian cinema, film industry ke Mahanayak, a powerful advocate for children, who also happens to be UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, Shri Amitabh Bachchan. Namaskar, this is Amitabh Bachchan. You must have heard these words several times. Do boon zindagi ke. And paanch saal saat paar. I hope you remember what they mean. Yes, I'm referring to life-saving vaccines that all children must get to protect them from preventable diseases. Immunization acts as a protective shield, keeping not just the child, but also families and communities safe. Imagine how wonderful it would be if in our country, all babies and children are fully immunized against all preventable diseases. Sounds like the future we would all want for every child. This World Children's Day, let us all join together to reimagine a world where every child survives and thrives, is healthy and immunized. To reach this goal, we need to work together, all of us, especially now, during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. Children need their vaccines, and with lockdown parameters easing over as a parent, I would urge you to please take your child for the scheduled vaccination to your nearest immunization session, health center, or hospital. Don't forget to take your immunization card with you. Always wear a mask, maintain physical distancing, and wash your hands frequently. Immunization has been at the heart of UNICEF's work over the last 70 years. It is an organization that has worked assiduously towards immunization for children around the world. No organization is better placed than UNICEF for the delivery of these vaccines. As a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF, it gives me immense pride to be a part of this great effort. Come, join in with me, and let us make a difference in the lives of all children everywhere. Thank you. Namaskar. तो हमने अमिताभ बच्चन को सुना अब हमारे साथ दक्षिण भारत की जानी मानी अभिनेत्री त्रिशा हैं त्रिशा इज यूनिसेफ सेलिब्रिटी एडवोकेट त्रिशा यू रिसेंटली हैड अ वर्चुअल फील्ड विजिट विद चाइल्ड राइट्स चैंपियंस इन चेन्नई हु हैव बीन कैरिंग योर मैसेज आउट इनटू देयर कम्युनिटीज यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड मेनी अकाउंट्स ऑफ वॉट चिल्ड्रन हैड टू गो थ्रू इन दिस पैंडेमिक एंड ऑल्सो हाउ दे डेल्ट विद इट हाई गुड इवनिंग एंड थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी हेल्प um i think it was a great opportunity by unicef to have organized this virtual field visit because uh, usually every year we go and meet these children and we have such fun interactions with them but this year unfortunately due to the pandemic we couldn't and so this virtual visit was as fun and interactive as it's always been when i've met them and the best part about it was not only were the problems being addressed but there was a solution to every problem and uh, these children discussed various initiatives that they had undertaken to overcome issues such as stigmatization uh, raising awareness towards covid appropriate behavior uh, mobilizing community against child marriage and writing petitions to the chief minister requesting for adequate transportation support because they wanted to attend the annual examinations in fact uh, two of these kids uh, altaf and sangamitra they went out of their way to make short films using their mobile phones to dispel stigma and discrimination against those infected with covid and they made sure these uh, films went viral by sharing them on social media and their whatsapp community groups to raise awareness in fact altaf also made a second short film to you know which showed us how in accessibility to smartphones and laptops uh were forcing girls to quit school and start working with their parents and uh, there was another child called madan and his story was so enduring so he and his friends heard about uh, child marriage that was going to happen in their community so what they did was they made this little street play like a skit showing the dangers of child marriage and it was a win because there's no child marriage in their community anymore and they stopped the one that was happening because they they raised awareness through this street play 
And in fact, um, Madan told me he was aspiring to be the chief minister and Altaf wanted to be a filmmaker, you know, so they could put their talents and capabilities to good use. And uh, to me, these kids are the true child rights champions. Absolutely, absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful to hear this. We got so much to learn from our children. And you know, with your on-ground experience and Yasmin, all the experience you've been getting over the last eight, nine months, Dr. Yasmin, what, what still are the gaps and what worries you and what needs to be immediately done, uh, do you feel? What worries you right now? Mm. So I think my biggest worry is, you know, we heard from Tisha the beautiful way in which children have not stopped dreaming. They have not stopped aspiring. And we have to keep that going. We can't afford for our children to, to be down, for them to not see hope. And for that, it's really important that we, we make sure that they remain in a learning environment, whether it's in home, uh, whether it's on some remote device, or there are volunteers in the community who are helping them. It's crucial that we keep their, um, their aspiration, their curiosity going. The second uh, area I would say concerns me is how do we make sure that they don't fall deeper into any health problems or children who are malnourished already um, fall deeper into malnutrition because we have worked so hard in India, the families, communities, the frontline workers, everyone has worked so hard to bring us uh, to a level where we're really getting close to the targets we're setting ourselves. But if we don't pay attention to that, we're going to slip back and it will be the children who suffer. Right. It's not just numbers. Right. Every number, exactly. there are millions of children behind that. The third area I would yeah. say is we have to address the violence, abuse and neglect because we know it's hitting kids and the pandemic is causing it to hit even harder. We do need to keep the services that are needed to support these children at the same time, promoting a caring and, and supportive community so that children are not frightened. The fear factor and the stigma that goes with it. We heard from Trisha the beautiful examples of where children are taking Lovely, action. Yeah. And that's something that's exactly. a great opportunity.